Hey guys, and welcome to Tutorial Grid. Now on this episode, we're going to be looking at a program called 3ds Max. Now 3ds Max is a, well of course it's a 3D editor. It's uh, so you can do a lot of cool fun stuff, make it look very real uh, or very fake, whatever you are looking for. It is a very powerful program uh, that we're just kind of looking at, haven't really touched a whole lot. Uh, but in recent light, we got a couple new uh, plugins that actually use 3ds max so uh in light of that we're actually going to show you how to create a flag so it's simple little animations uh simple little uh work to be done uh but first let's go to the facebook page make sure to like us on facebook at avid productions 479 as well as tutorial grid facebook.com slash tutorial grid it's right there look at it and like us you should because it's awesome awesome also subscribe to us on YouTube. YouTube is fun. YouTube, subscribe. Okay, now that I got that over with, let's get started. Now, first off, uh, we're basically going to focus on just the actual waving of the flag first, the how simple it can be. Um, so, um, let's create a simple little cylinder. We have the front, we're going to actually go to the top view, so left click on the top and just kind of zoom in and let's create a circle. So just a small little circle. And then let's make it very tall. So go back into our front view here and we'll right click and we'll hit scale. And this will be able to scale it up. So let's go ahead and just scale that up, okay? Zoom. All right, we have a really big long flagpole. Okay. All right. Now, next, what we're going to create is a sphere. I'm going to create a sphere. So, or not a sphere. We're going to create a flag. So, let's go to and hit plane. And we'll go to our left wireframe. And we'll just kind of create, create a flag. Okay. We'll just create just a small little flag like so. Now, over here in our parameters, we're going to have to want, we're going to want to go up to... Uh, probably on this one, let's just go to 25 and then width 25. So bring that up to 25. That gives us a lot of stuff to play with. Now there's another way of doing this, but it's for garments. Uh, that's another thing you can do, but this works out pretty well if you're just creating like a simple flag. You can also bring these up if you want more of a realistic looking flag. So I'm just going to set mine at 50. Why not? Why not? We'll just set it at 50. All right, now that we have that done, let's go ahead and move this over to where it's looking pretty good on top of our flagpole here. Make sure to leave plenty of room. I kind of moved this onto the side, so we'll just go ahead and hit left. All right, we got a weird little red flag. Fantastic, that's what we're looking for. All right, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over into our modifier list. We're gonna have our flag selected. And you go down, and you'll hit cloth. Now, cloth is awesome. Cloth is not only going to allow you to create this as a flag, uh, but it'll also let you simulate wind, gravity, and all that stuff. But we'll get into that here in a little bit. But we're going to go into our object properties. Or actually, no, do not go into object properties yet. Go hit the uh, little plus on the cloth, and you'll hit group. Now the groups is going to be able to allow you to do a whole bunch of different things, but what we're going to do is we're going to select the first edge right here on the flagpole, and we're going to hit make group. Group 01 is fine, so group 001, uh, but with that selected, you're going to hit preserve, and that's going to preserve our actual flag proportions. So this isn't going to change at all, ever. It is preserved. It's kind of like ice. It's stuck. It's not going to do anything. Um, okay, now we're going to go back up and hit cloth. Oh. We're going to hit object properties. Now there are a couple things you can add to the object properties. First we have our plane, which is our flag. But let's go up to here to add objects. And it's going to have our cylinder. Hit add. Now that cylinder is going to act as a collision object. So go ahead and select collision. And then hit plane and select cloth. And for this one, I, I like using the silk preset. Uh, you can mess around a lot with this, but make sure everything kind of looks clean. You can mess around with some of it, but sometimes it won't simulate correctly if you select too many things. So we'll go back up here and on our cylinder, select collision object. Hit OK. 
Now, in theory, this should work. So, to make sure this works, we have our timeline down here, and it's, we're just gonna hit simulate. All right, so actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a force. So let's go ahead and go into our forces. Our uh, space swaps is over here, looks like a couple little wavy things. And we're going to select wind. And we're going to put our wind right over here. We're gonna make a little box. And we're gonna go into our left panel. I'm gonna hit right click and then rotate. We're gonna rotate this to the right. And then we're gonna go into our top panel and rotate it around to, actually, never mind. We don't want to do that. You want to have it, have the wind basically showing where you want it to show or uh, moving where you want it to move. So let's go ahead and move that around. So that way our wind is facing towards our flag so it's going to be waving it. All right, now that we have that, go into mod our modify list. I'm going to change it to however much you want. I'm going to turn mine to three for strength. That's how strong the wind's going to be. I'm going to turn up my turbulence a little bit. Okay, now we're going to go back and we're going to select the cloth and we are going to uh, go down to cloth forces and hit wind and move that over to our forces in simulation. We'll hit OK and let's go ahead and simulate. Now we have some wind that's looking pretty good. It's kind of flowing, flowing fairly nicely. All right. Now that we got that, we can kind of play around with our wind some more. Let's let's change the strength and turbulence. Let's just turn it up. Just turn it up. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and hit erase simulation and simulate. Now that flag's really waving. It's got some real kind of gravity to it, and we have this awesome kind of flag wave. Fantastic. And if we hit our play button down here, we can put that up into real time and see how that looks. But so far, it's uh, looking pretty good. Now, if this isn't taking to your liking as much, what you can do, if it doesn't look as real as you want it to, you can also go down and go back into your uh, create tool and do space warps again, and you can put gravity. So let's go ahead and just do that. Let's put some gravity in here. So let's go ahead and modify and move that up. And we're going to turn our mod our gravity to the ground turn it down to the ground because everybody knows gravity faces down okay now you can also modify this if you want more gravity or less gravity you can do whatever but usually the strength of one gravity is pretty good so we'll go back into this select our flag erase simulation and simulate All right, and here's what we got. Got a flag with some gravity, some cool little look to it. We've got a flag, got our flag. Now, you can do a lot of other stuff to it. You can do, um, do materials and such. To render this out, that'll be a another tutorial, but this is just really how to create a flag and really how to animate stuff. Um, well, let's just go ahead and let's just go ahead and materialize this. So, go into your render settings and render setup and go all the way down to assign renderer. Click that little uh, plus box and hit the uh, where it says default scanline renderer right next to it and we're going to go into mental ray. So, select okay and exit. And now that's gonna give us a whole bunch of materials that we were not able to use before. So we have stuff like glass materials, we have metal materials, all sorts of fun stuff that uh, you can use in your kind of, uh, in your projects. So I'm gonna use aluminum polished and aluminum dark. Let's just see how that looks, right? So we'll do that and then we'll put our parlous look on our flag. Now this isn't going to look exactly correct because I mean I'm using weird metal textures but this is just for example. So we'll go ahead and do pull this frame out and we'll go ahead and go to rendering and render. 
And look how cool that looks. You have this nice shiny little flag. And you can do whatever you want with it. And, uh, yeah, that's how you create a flag. But, again, guys, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube tutorial grid. There will be a lot more tutorials about 3D and about a lot of other stuff. This was just a very basic tutorial because I just kind of figured this out the other day, how to do this, and I was just kind of excited because I don't really use 3D programs that much. But, again, go to YouTube.com, subscribe to us. You're probably watching us on YouTube right now. Go to the Avid Productions Facebook. I have a message already. Go to the Facebook, like us, like Tutorial Grid, like Avid. Do it now.